for this morning, December 27th. We are very close to the end of 2020. And while 2020 hasn't been the year maybe we expected it to be, God has been faithful. He has made a way, and we want to open our service this morning singing Waymaker. He is the Waymaker. So why don't you stand with me and let's sing this song together. who makes a way. He works miracles. He is the one who calls people to himself. And we want to extend our condolences this morning. Francis Martyshuk's husband passed away Christmas morning. And even in that, we see the miracle that he came to Christ in April. And uh, he is now with in the presence of the Lord. And so while it is sad that she lost her husband, she is rejoicing today that he is with the Lord. And so we extend our condolences to them. And uh, let's just go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that you do all things well. And so, Father, we rejoice this morning in the birth of your son. We rejoice that we've celebrated uh, who you are, that you came to earth as a baby to grow up, to die for our sins, that you sent your son, even though he was perfect and holy and was one with you, Father, he was willing to come to earth. 
for us. And so, Father, we rejoice in that this morning. We rejoice that we know eternal life, that we have that hope, and that we don't, we don't live in fear, Father, but that we rejoice in the future hope that we have. And even as uh, Sam Martishuk went to be uh, with you this, this past week, Father, we rejoice in that, knowing that he is in your presence. And so, Father, I pray that you would give each one of us that uh, desire that we would have that relationship with you, that when you call us home, we'll be ready to go, and we look forward to that day, Lord. Rejoice this week that we can celebrate uh, your birth, and as we go into a new year, Father, may we be holy, may we be righteous, may this be a year when we draw closer and closer to you. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. We just have a few announcements to make. Just a quick reminder that we are signing up to attend services as we are only allowed to have 45, at least for the next couple weeks, and then we will see what happens after that. And uh, I just want to quickly announce the devotions. Uh, Pastor Jonathan mentioned that. I think many of you are following along, but if you haven't been, January 1st is where we start in Genesis and Matthew as our Bible reading program follows the Bible reading through from beginning to end in a year. You read a pa passage in the Old Testament and a passage in the New. And Pastor Jonathan has been doing these since July, but if you want to start in January, you'd be starting right at the beginning, and those Bible studies are on YouTube under, the, um, under our church, Northwest Pentecostal, and under the playlist Devotions, Bible reading, Daily Reading the Word. You can also see his devotions if you go to npachurch.org. There's a little menu item called resources, and underneath there you can click. It will take you to the YouTube devotions. Or if you go to the bottom, it has a list of all the reading for the year, and under that is the devotions written in written form. So if you like to read along while you're watching the devotion, or if you prefer just to read or just to watch, there are options for you. And so uh, you'll want to make uh, that available as you head into 2021. Also, this is our last week for tax receipts. So if you want a tax receipt in the year 2020, today is the day to give. If you go online, you have until the 31st. But for today, it's the last Sunday to receive a tax receipt in 2020. And uh, so 2021, here we come. This is amazing. It's hard to believe 2020 is almost done. And uh, as we go and take our offering this morning, let's just uh, pray over the offering that we will give to the Lord as he has given to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have been so gracious with us, so generous with us, with us, Father. And though we have had a year that's been a little bit different than many of us would have expected, you have been faithful and you have been good. And so, Father, we rejoice this morning that we are your children, that you call us your own, and that everything we have is yours, Father. And I pray that we would generously give back to you from what you've given to us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as we have a time of worship. And let's just... Uh, Worship the Lord together this morning. I wanted to start off with singing a Christmas carol, but it's angels from the realms of glory. So come and worship. That's one of the big verses of this song. Come and worship. Let's worship the Lord together. We have many, many things to be thankful for. Even with COVID and everything, the numbers are few here in church. There's lots of us across the world right now. Let's Raise our voices and worship the King.
guys sound magnificent. The next song we're going to sing is He Keeps Me Singing. Listen specifically to the last two verses as you're singing them. Let those words touch your heart and soul as we get to them. There's five verses, but the last two, I know you're going to enjoy them. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keep me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Sometimes the path seems rough and steep. See his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Beyond the starry sky, I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Hallelujah! Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing. Sweetest name I know fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Isn't it great to know that no matter what's going on, we have Jesus. We can sing. During COVID times, all these people are worrying. I heard a thing this week that said, if you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. And as Christians... That should be the way we live, and we can sing about it. So let's sing, Bless the Name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel.
sing, shout to the Lord. Does, don't you know that God loves to hear his praises? And when you guys are singing, it sounds great down here. But just imagine, when we get up to heaven and we're all together and singing the praise of God, millions of us saints, how great that's going to sound. Because you guys sound good down here, but just wait till we get up there. Let's make them hear us this morning up here. Let's shout to the Lord. Isn't it great to know that we have that promise? We're not just singing empty words here. We're singing the truth. And we can know that, that God is on our side and he has got that promise for us. Let's sing King of Kings, Majesty, and just give him glory and praise. King of Kings.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are the Almighty, the, the most powerful. Lord, there is no one who compares with you, and you are so faithful, so good, always true. We can always depend on you. So, Lord, we come to you with humble hearts, uh, Lord, this, this morning. Um, and having just celebrated Christmas, Jesus is on our hearts, on our minds. Uh, and, Lord, we give you thanks for him. Lord, we think of those who are mourning. It is a time uh, as there are, is death around us. There is suffering. Lord, we pray for Noreen and her family, that, Lord, her brother is in the hospital, had a fall, and also now has the coronavirus. We pray your touch upon him, comfort for the family. Lord, we pray you would uh, deliver, save, heal, uh, bring to yourself, Lord, uh, we just thank you that you are, your grace is enough for us. You are always present, always good. We can depend on you. Now, Lord, as we go to the word, we pray that you would help us to receive, that the word would be implanted. It would bear fruit in our lives. That, Lord, we would walk in faithfulness before you. We would do what it says. We thank you, Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. I want us uh, to turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. I better take my mask off. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, it's been quite a year, 2020. I don't think we've had one like this that I can remember. But hallelujah, it's coming to an end. This is the last Sunday of 2020, and I'm looking forward to 2021. Uh, I'm looking forward to great things and seeing the hand of God, to see what God has in store for each one of us. And I know it's going to be great. He, uh, he's looking after us in every situation, in every trial, he's there, and so... Uh, I thought uh, looking forward to 2021, it would be good to think about excelling for God in 2021. We want to excel. We want to uh, glorify God in all that we say and do. I think that's the heart of believers, that uh, let us excel for God. Let us be great in the eyes of the Lord. And I think uh, the majority of people have a natural desire to excel at things they're doing. I know, uh, you know, Moira playing the piano, she practices, she always is excelling in her uh, piano practice. I know those that sing, they always want to sing the best they can. Uh, I know those that are students in school, you always want to do the best. Can I hear an Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's, uh, it's part of life that uh, when you're working, whatever you work at, Christians should be the best employees. Uh, we should excel at whatever we put our hands to. And I think we see that attitude in all professions. Uh, be believers want to excel. And the disciples, they had this desire. And they, uh, they were talking to Jesus, and in uh, Matthew chapter 18, the disciples came to him. It says, and uh, verse 1, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, they wanted to be great in the kingdom of God. And he called the child to himself and set him before them and said, truly I say to you, Unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. You know, uh, they asked Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And, you know, as we close the door 
to 2020 and open the door to 2021, let us consider how we can excel for God, how we can be great in the eyes of the Lord. I know probably many of us have been trying to excel for God in 2020, and it's been tough, but in 2021, we want to excel for the Lord. We want to be great in the eyes of the Lord. And Jesus, in this uh, passage, chapter 18, he's telling us that we can excel in 2021. And Matthew chapter 18 gives us three needed characteristics to be great in the eyes of God. You want to be great in the eyes of God? Let me tell you the first thing you need to be great in the eyes of God. You need and I need a humble spirit. That's what we need if we want to excel in the eyes of God. We need a humble spirit. And it's not our personal worth or our greatness that we get into the kingdom of God. It's not how many works I do that I'm going to open up heaven's door. The idea is that I humble myself, that I call on God, that I must change from the old ways. You know, repentance is walking this way, and then you meet Jesus and you turn around and walk the other way. You no longer do the things that you used to do. And uh, the entering here, if we enter heaven, it implies a conversion that is taking place, a turning our backs on the old way and turning towards God. We enter heaven through humbling ourselves, to acknowledging that you and I are sinners and we need God. To come on the scene. You know, uh, there's a, Jesus told another story, awesome story in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. And he also told this parable to some of the people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying to himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week while I pay tithes of all that I earn. But the tax collector standing some distance away was unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven but was beating his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. So you want to be great for God? You want to excel in 2020? Be humble. Be humble like a child. And we will excel for the Lord. There's no humility without love for God and confidence in him. Humility is not subjection to a tyrant, but reverence to a father. We must establish a childlike relationship with our father in heaven. Be like a child. Be humble, and you will please the Lord. You'll be great for God in 2021. Humility is childlikeness. And in this uh, section we're looking at in Matthew 18, uh, verse 6 to 10, the Bible says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks, for it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come. But woe to that man through whom the stumbling blocks come. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into eternal fire. 
If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into the fiery hell. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. Humility is Christ-likeness. It's a teachable spirit, not in ignorance or fickleness, but a teachable spirit in submission to the Father, knowing God knows what's best for each of us. God's will is the best thing that could happen to you, that you would walk in his will. God told Paul to be teachable in Acts chapter 9, verse 6. He told Cornelius, uh, or Cornelius was teachable in Acts chapter 10, verse 33. 33, and the jailer in Acts 16, verse 30, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's the humble spirit. What must I do to please you, God? We need to ask the Lord that on a regular basis. How can I please you today, Father? What should I do today that will honor and glorify you? That shows a submitted spirit, a humble spirit. You're not exalting yourself, you're exalting the Lord. You want the will of God. We're never so educated that we cannot learn from someone else. An unteachable spirit is not humility. Humility is teachable. Humility is Christ-likeness and a consciousness of weakness. You know, we're weak in ourselves, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. It's in our weakness that people see the strength of Christ in you. As you go through trials and tribulations, and you are glorifying God, you're you're, uh, full of joy, the joy of the Lord, even though your heart is breaking, people see that and they say, How come? You're so different. And you could say, because Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. You could exalt the Lord in the midst of your trial. You can let your light shine. And that is so beautiful. People see the Lord. In fact, Corinthians, the Apostle Paul gave us a warning. And he says, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. You and I need to always be conscious. It doesn't matter how many years we've been walking on the road for the Lord. We're still human, and we need to lean on the Lord. Trust him in all our situations. It's his strength that makes us holy, that makes us pure, that keeps us walking straight and narrow. Humility is Christ-likeness in total devotion. It's pretty uh, powerful statement here that Jesus gives when he says, if you're uh, speaking about stumbling blocks, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you not to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into eternal fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it from you. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into the fiery hell. Now, I know Jesus did not mean that literally. Although there's some, uh, there's a few people who have cut off their hand and different things like that, but uh, he's not talking about that. He's talking in a figure of speech called a hyperbole, where he grossly exaggerates the truth to get the point across. So, If your hand causes you to stumble, the idea is surrender to the Lord. Let God come on the scene. Let God give you the victory in this situation. He doesn't expect us to cut off our bodily parts. Verse 10 tells us that we have guardian angels watching over us. We need that total trust. The Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. And in verse 10, 
He says, they're angels. The, the children's angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. God's angels are watching over each one of us. And uh, once we're saved, his angels, I believe we all have an angel guarding us. Uh, and they watch over us in many ways. I remember once we were, Mara and I were coming, uh, going home from one town to where my mom was, to another town, and we, uh, she did the laundry there, because we didn't have laundry facilities where we were, and uh, we were going across this bridge. Nathan was sitting in the back at that time, and I had my window open, and my mirror, I had a Suburban then, and my mirror was, you know, out, and as we're coming across the bridge, there's this guy, there was a a turn just to come around the uh, to get onto the bridge and this guy came around so fast I, f I figured for sure we were having an accident all I could say was Jesus and his mirror hit my mirror and smashed the uh, the mirror glass into the car and on top of the laundry and got some glass on Nathan's arm but I know the angel of the Lord was with us. I know God was there. He watches over us. That's the awesome thing of walking with God over the years. You have different experiences that you know. The hand of the Lord was there. And it's so beautiful to experience the hand of the Lord. Be humble. Be like a child and you'll excel for God in 2021. Not only... Do we want to have a humble spirit? But secondly, we need a compassionate heart if we want to excel for God. A compassionate heart. And you see that in the uh, passage of Scripture here in chapter uh, 18, verses 11 to uh, 14. The Bible says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If any man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go and search for the one that is straying? And if it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 which have not gone astray. For it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones perish. God wants us to have a compassionate spirit. A spirit that looks after the lost, looks for the lost, that's, that's always uh, conscious of the will of God. I wonder, are you concerned about the perishing? Do you have any concern about those that are going to hell? I mean, there's all kinds in this world that don't care about Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And so he is the way. And if they're not following him, they're not going to heaven. God gives us this message to have a compassionate heart, to be uh, loving and seeking those that are lost. We read the tremendous responsibility of the man of God or the woman of God, um, when Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, where we find uh, the story here, God says, When I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and you do not warn him to speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way, that he may live, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on your hands. Yet if you have warned the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. That's found in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 to 19. Do you know what? The exact same scripture is found in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 8 and 9. You know, it's important when God says something one time, but when God says something two times, that's pretty important, I think. I think we need to listen to the words of God and be concerned for those who are perishing. 
Be concerned for those that we rub shoulders with, that we get to know at our workplace, at our school, wherever we are. People need to know the message of truth. People need to know what you believe. You know, if he did not warn them, their blood would be upon his hands. We have a similar responsibility today with the gospel. You know, you have the answer. You have the way to heaven. You know how to go to heaven. And it's our responsibility to share the good news with those around about us. You know, there was... Uh, you know, D.L. Moody, the great evangelist, he was, uh, he was a blunt man. And in his service, he was having a testimony service. And this man stood up and he said, you know, I've been on the Mount of Transfiguration for the last five years. And D.L. Moody interrupted him and said, brother, how many people did you lead to Christ last year? And he said, and D.L. Moody said, have you led one to Christ? And the guy said, I don't think so. And D.L. Moody said, we don't want any mountaintop experiences that you get so high you can't reach down to the lowly and save or lead those to Christ. And that's so true. The experience we want with Christ is an experience that gives us that compassionate heart that reaches out to the law that reaches out to the lowly, that reaches out to help those that need help. That's the kind of heart that we need. You know, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him? If we believe that, we need to be vocal about it. We need to tell people about Jesus Christ. We need to tell them the way. People need to know that you are a believer and they can come to you and find out how to get to heaven. They need to know that you're serving the master. <clears throat> you know, uh, I remember I had a friend down in Minneapolis when we went to, when I went to Bible college and seminary down there. <clears throat> and he, he used to work at Honeywell the Honeywell thermostat things. There's a big uh, factory down there in Minneapolis. And he worked there. He worked there for years. A and then he finally got saved. One guy led him to the Lord. And when he got saved, he was telling everybody around him about being saved and how awesome it is to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And he was excited. And there was this guy that worked beside Gary for years. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. After working all those years, Gary never knew that he was a believer. What a sad testimony. People need to know you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Let people know that Jesus Christ is your Savior, that you love him and you serve him. That's how you'll be great in 2021. Let your testimony shine for the Lord. Let people know that you're a servant of the Almighty God. You'll walk and talk with the Savior. Hallelujah. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, you'll tell other people about him. We need to pray for a compassionate heart. You know, if you want to excel for God in 2021, you need a humble spirit. You need a compassionate heart. But thirdly, you need a forgiving attitude. And we see that forgiving attitude over in chapter 18, Matthew 18, verse 15. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. And if he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, 
Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. Jesus taught church discipline. When people do wrong, when people sin, it's our responsibility to go to them, to your brother, and try to bring correction in a spirit of humility, in love, and uh, in, uh, in that kind of spirit. And the process is laid out here for church discipline. But the aim of the game is to bring that person around to Christ to the right lifestyle. And there's been many, many ideas about this, but I believe the Bible tells us straight how to do church discipline and how to bring correction. If a person repents and is sorry, he's taught forgiveness. You know, Peter... In verse 21, Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And uh, Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but to 70 times seven. In other words, there's no end to your forgiveness. If someone hurts you and they come and ask for forgiveness, Give them forgiveness. Have that forgiving spirit, that forgiving attitude. Have that in your system so that you're willing to forgive people who hurt you. You know, he tells a story here after this, the whole idea of forgiveness. He tells about this servant who owed his master so much and, he went, and the, the master came and wanted his money and was going to put him in jail. And the servant fell at the master's feet, and he said, oh, please forgive me, forgive me. And so the master forgave the great debt that he owed. And then that servant went out to one of his servants, and the guy owed him some. It wasn't nothing like what the master, what he owed the master. But he would not forgive. When, the, when his servant fell at his feet and asked for forgiveness, he said no, and he threw him in jail. And then all the servants of the great master went and told him. And so he was not forgiven either because he didn't practice forgiveness you know, forgiveness is very important in the life of the believer. Forgiveness is so important that if you're not forgiving, I believe you're barred from heaven. The doors to heaven close if you don't forgive. Isn't that what the Lord's Prayer says? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, for if you forgive give others for Pardon me. For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Pretty serious. God holds forgiveness as very important in your life and in my life. We need to be forgiving people. And this forgiveness applies to every aspect of our life. Your marriage, especially in marriage relationships, there will be times when we disagree. You know, some people call them arguments. Some people call them fights. Some people call them disagreements. Whatever you call them, there has to be that forgiving spirit if you're going to get along. The same in the church. When you have a confrontation with someone, learn how to ask for forgiveness and learn how to forgive each other. And same as in your community, in your life, you need to be forgiving. We, 
as Christians need to excel in forgiveness. There's nothing like knowing you did wrong and ask for forgiveness and receiving it. How awesome is that, to be forgiven? It's just like our life in Christ. We live for our own self. We live for the devil. And then we came to Christ and he came into our hearts and forgave us for all our sins. You know, the devil liked to bring those sins to your mind, all the bad things you did. But you can always say, Jesus died on the cross and his blood covers my sins. Don't forget that. Don't live in condemnation over your past life, over all the sins you did and all the wickedness you did. Call on the Lord and exalt him. Give him the glory because he's forgiven you for all that. That's the kind of God we serve. He forgives us. You know, it's just like uh, I read about a man who was angry with his dog and he threw a rock at the dog and the rock hit the dog right in the forearm, uh, whatever, forearm, and uh, broke his leg. And that poor dog came whimpering and whining back to the master that threw the rock and licked his hand. That's a Christ-like spirit. We, as believers, need to be willing to forgive. We need to forgive whoever hurts us. And sometimes it's very difficult. When you get hurt, seriously hurt, it's very difficult to forgive. But you must. You must forgive. Like Paul the Apostle, when he was writing to the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 to 32, he said, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed in the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. It's not Christian to hold grudges. God wants us to forgive those who hurt us. If we want to excel in 2021, you need a humble spirit. You need a compassionate heart, and you need a forgiving attitude. People in the world like to excel at their occupation in life, and I believe that Christians as well want to excel at their occupation. But I think more than anything, we should want to excel in pleasing the Master, in living holy and righteous before God. So in 2021, let's excel in pleasing our God. You know, uh, R.C. Sproul wrote a book, The Holiness of God. Awesome book. And in there he talks about uh, how many times unbelievers often feel uh, uneasy in the presence of obedient Christians. The holiness of God, which is reflected in the believer's life, makes the non-Christian uncomfortable. And he told this story of a well-known professional golfer, golfer was playing in a tournament with uh, President Jer Gerald Ford, the fellow uh, pro, a fellow pro uh, golfer Jack Nicholson, and Billy Graham. The four went out for a round and... Uh, after they uh, finished playing, the, uh, one of the friends asked this pro, he said, what was it like playing with uh, president, the president and uh, Billy Graham? And the pro said with disgust, I don't need Billy Graham stuffing religion down my throat. And uh, the guy said, was he preaching at you all the time? He said, he never said a word. He never said a word. But I don't need his religion. And it's funny how it is. People who live for Christ, many times your life brings rebuke to those that are not living for Christ. 
because you love God and you have the attitude and the character traits of the Lord. And so that is displayed. That rubs off and many times. Living for Christ is preaching to those that don't know Christ. And all those people that don't know Christ, they know how we live, how we're supposed to live. They're the first ones to point their finger if you do something wrong. They know how you're supposed to live. And when they see you living holy, it speaks to their hearts. And it brings conviction. You and I can excel for God by living for Christ. I wonder, do unbelievers sense our godly influence? Wherever we go, whatever we do, in our work, in our play, in our school, do they know that you love Jesus? And do they sense the presence of God in your life? I think that's a good question for us to ask ourselves. So in 2021, we can excel for God by having a humble spirit, by having a compassionate heart, and by having a forgiving attitude. I want to wish you all a happy 2021. Excel for God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to walk and talk with you. And Lord, I pray that this year that's coming would be a great year of obedience for all of us, that we would walk in holiness and righteousness, that we would be pleasing to you, Lord God, we thank you that you're with us, and so we commit our lives to you. We commit this day to you. Help us, Lord, to honor and glorify you in everything we say and do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. We look forward to 2021, and you know what? We do not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future, amen? And though we've had a tough year, perhaps, I think we all can say that God has been good. And I think that it would be awesome to close our last service of 2020 with singing of the goodness of God. So why don't you stand with me and let's sing this song called The Goodness of God. I love you. the goodness
we thank you for your goodness this morning. We thank you for your love and your compassion, Father, for your understanding towards us, Father. And I pray that as we've come through 2020 and we've seen your faithfulness, Father, that going into 2021, we would be faithful as well, Father, that we would be people after your own heart. Father, that we would be a people that are uh, compassionate, that are forgiving, that have a humble spirit, and Father, that you would find us faithful. Lord, I know that you are going to be faithful. You always are, and your word is ever true. Lord, may we also cling to that. May we be righteous and holy in your sight. And I pray your blessing upon each one of us as we go forward into 2021. In your precious name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy New Year. Have an awesome year.